Hey everybody, it is Monday, uh, May twenty, May eighteenth. <laughs> I never know what day it is anymore. This is the About to Break podcast. I'm your host Taylor Hughes, and we've got a great show today with David Minkin. We're going to get into a lot of topics, uh, but we're 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 really going to talk about kind of producing online shows and what that looks like. I know that's been an interesting topic of conversation as we're kind of uh, in a different time of our performing career and what it looks like to do stuff online, what works, what doesn't. I think there's a lot of takeaways here that are going to be helpful to you. And Dave is just an amazingly creative individual and uh, anyone who's been able to be a part of his magic and wine experiences that he's curated over the last, gosh, man, decade, uh, are you, you know you're in for a treat. So stick around for that. Before we jump in with David, I want to take a moment and let you know about some exciting things hope- happening. Hoping, hoping, hoping is a good word for right now. I'm hoping things get better which is a perfect segue to what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, Things are happening over at our Patreon page. Uh, As many of you know, I taped my first ever comedy magic special uh, called Chasing Wonder. We taped that in January at Dynasty Typewriter. We're almost wrapped on post-production of that, and I'm so excited to share it with everyone. Uh, But I'm going to do a little segment, a Chasing Wonder segment. It's only going to be available over at Patreon. Uh, I've noticed right now no one really has answers for us of how to deal with this currently. But I have noticed some answers and some hope in re-examining stories of uh, great women and men throughout history who have gone through challenging times and figured out a way to get through the other side. And so I'm going to be sharing, uh, every week I'm going to be sharing some stories and some encouragement uh, from people who just chased wonder in the past and and hopefully inspire us to how we continue to do it today. So I'd encourage you to go check that out uh, for as little as a buck or more a month. You can get access to all of those. And uh, I just want to thank everyone for your continued support of this show. It, it, it really is something that I started on a whim, and it's become one of my greatest joys in life. And um, I'm going to continue doing it through this whole pandemic lockdown. Uh, we have some great conversations lined up. Some that we've already recorded that I can't wait to share with you and some that I'm recording this week that I'm really excited to share as well. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this conversation of the About to Break podcast with the incredible David Minkin. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Something is about to break. Hey everybody, welcome to About to Break. I'm your host, Taylor Hughes, and I am joining you live quarantine. Uh, Not live, we're live. He and I are alive. You're alive too, but we're not together. You're going to hear this in the future. We're already off to a great start. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm so excited. I have with me the amazing David Minkin. David, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. We are both uh, hunkered down. Where where are you currently? Uh, I'm in Los Angeles. Awesome. Hunkered down in my apartment and... uh, yeah, it's been a strange time, hasn't it? It is a very is a very weird time. We started talking about the weird time and then we we did the classic podcast thing like let's just start recording. We better just save this. This is this is good <laughs> stuff. It is uh today is Tuesday. I have to look at the calendar cuz I never know what day it is anymore. Yeah. It's Tuesday, April 21st. Uh we are still in uh in a in a lockdown mode and being safe here by staying indoors. Um which is wild. I know your schedule is normally very full. And you're doing a lot of performances. You're doing a lot of things going out there. In fact, I see some really cool things. I'm, my ADD is kicking in already. Can you talk to me a little bit about what you got on the shelf behind you there? Oh, um, yeah, I have some books and some stuff that's like lit up. <laughs> it, look, it looks really nice. <laughs> Thanks, man. I created this set so that I could do um, virtual magic shows properly. Yes. And, um, I wanted to have a certain level of production value. Yeah. Um that I didn't see out there much. Mm-hmm. So I, cr- I painted this wall. I oh actually was one of my, one of my non-essential trips out was I went to Home Depot to get paint and I painted this wall down. Um, I thought about going to Anaheim and grabbing my curtains for my show, but it was like, I just, that was a little bit daunting so, to go all the way down there. Yeah. Just a, a little too, too much of a trek. It's weird to be, we went out today my wife and I, we had to pick up a couple of things and I mean, we're doing all the necessary precautions, but even just being out, it's so, it's just, it's a weird vibe driving around. It's weird. It's like nothing I've ever experienced. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Armageddon, man. Man. It's just weird. Like, but it's also um, kind of interesting because we're all 
in it together. And so there's a little bit of, I find a little bit of camaraderie yeah. mixed in with the desperation out there. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just an interesting time. You know, I think people are a little more raw and a little more human than they normally would be. Yeah. Um, it's kind of fascinating. Yeah, it is. It is that whole thing. It's funny. You would think being separated from people, you'd be a little more um, feel disconnected, but you do have this sense of like, yeah, we're all doing this. Yeah. Most of us are doing this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Most of us. A couple are not doing it. Some of them There's are distant relatives. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no longer. They've been excommunicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, your set looks amazing. How how long into the journey of this did you go? I better get set up to start doing some virtual. Uh, the, the next day. Really? <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I spent about, you know, 24 hours going, what in the world is going on? What am yeah. I going to do? Um, I had just opened a new show at the Biltmore downtown, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I will resume once this is all over, uh, yeah. which is an amazing venue. It took me literally three years to get that deal in place. Um, but uh, yeah, just as soon as I started, you know, I'd done two weeks okay. and and then this hit and suddenly, you know, all the money that was spent on marketing and everything else, like it's just all kind of down the drain. But um, the day after Los Angeles announced that we were going to be in a lockdown, I decided to start getting ready to do this. And, and thankfully, um, can, I think the audio dropped off. Like, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, great, great. So, um, so yeah, I, I, the day after I decided, okay, I, I got to perform like, well, like, you know, this, I mean, we're performers. If we're not performing, we get a little itchy, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but I also, I also wanted to, to figure out a way to monetize it and to continue to try to make this a profession and not just something I'm giving away on the internet. Yes. Know? That's good. You and, can see a lot of people right now. Just, it's funny. Most magicians don't put out material, which I've, I've had thoughts on for years about, you know, stand-up comedians, they, they produce an hour, they put it out and then they gain right. a fan base. Uh, mm -hmm. But magicians have been so secretive of their material. And it's like within three weeks, everybody's just like, here's my whole show. I know it's crazy. It's a weird vibe, man. It's crazy. And they're, and they're doing, the thing is, is that they're giving something away that they later anticipate to sell tickets to. And that right. to me does not make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I, I did something where I, the day after the lockdown, I was, I was feeling anxious and I knew a lot of people were really scared and some people were getting sick and it was, it was, you know, yeah. and I, I posted on um, Facebook and Instagram, I posted a post that basically said, uh, I did a little magic. Uh, and then I, I said, if, if you're affected negatively or severely by this, this situation, uh, for the next couple of days, I'm going to donate my time to do magic, short magic performances on Zoom. I did 15 minute little magic, you know, morale boosters on right. Zoom. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and the idea was I wanted to keep it not like out there on for the general public, but a one on one experience that is not recorded and put forever on the Internet, right. but something that I could share something and, and lift people's spirits. Like it was truly a, that was my intention. I just wanted to help people in whatever way I could and sort of pay it forward. That's great. And it like got this huge response to the point where, um, it was originally intended to be for people that were sick or kind of, you know, uh, maybe out of work and really, um, affected negatively or, or senior living alone or, you know, just, or first responders or that sort of thing. And it just ended up being like, Hey, can you um, do magic for my kids and right. all of their friends? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So I very quickly realized, okay, I need to kind of mm, modulate this in some way. So I, I put a form up on Google forms where people had to kind of like fill out a form for me to do it yep. for, for a couple of reasons. Like one is like, let them go through the tiny effort of filling out a form to receive something. And then also, um, you know, for me to be able to kind of weed through it a little bit. And, um, cause the amount of, of people that wanted me to do, it was like literally for the first week I was all day long. Uh, I was just in here doing 
virtual magic shows for people. <laughs> um, and I realized a couple of things right off the bat. Like, first off, I realized at the very beginning, I, I sucked. I was like, it was a weird environment, right? It's right. new medium. Like we're not necessarily the stuff that we do doesn't, doesn't automatically translate to this medium right, right here. Right, right, right. Yeah. When, so, you're, when you're in a room and you're close up and they're watching, you know, your every move and, and that, and the can also too, what's weird is as a magician, we utilize misdirection, but the camera, yes. it's the unblinking eye. It doesn't look away. So right. you, yeah. yeah. Um, so things like that are, yeah. So I, I quickly went to a two camera shoot. I have one Great. from this and then I have one on my hands, which I can turn on and off and, um, you know, talk to them yeah. and then come back to that. Cause I think that's important, um, not to just have them staring at your hands the entire time when you're actually connecting with them. Yep. The other thing is like, it's really hard to connect with people over the internet and by Skype or zoom or whatever. It's, I mean, this is cool. Like we're, we're chatting right. right now. I don't know if your li- listeners are aware, but we're actually seeing each yeah, other. We can see each other. We're, we're only, you're only hearing audio, but we're, we're looking yeah. right at each other. Um, so like this whole dynamic is a really strange thing. And, and you feel like, Oh yeah, I can just go do magic on, uh, you know, on zoom for the camera or whatever. And you get there and you start to realize I am out of my element. Like this yeah. is a strange thing and I need to figure it out. Uh-huh. And so, and I've seen a lot of magicians just like assume that it's translating online and it's really not translating. Yeah. It's uh, kind of, and, kind of voyeuristic. Like a lot of guys will just set up in a corner yeah. and they're just doing their act. Yeah. But, it's, but, it's, but your it's act sad. doesn't work this way. No. <laughs> you know, it's not the same. You have to, you have to tailor it to the, to the experience. They're doing it and they're doing it for free and they're doing a lesser form of it. Mm. None of that makes sense to me. But, um, and, and I'm not judging, by the way, I like, I, I understand the compulsion to perform and I'm completely sensitive to that. And yeah. I, I don't fault people for doing it. I just, um, I think there's a better way. I think, I think yeah. dialogue on this topic is a good thing for our art and for our community. And we should figure out what exactly we're meant to be doing right now. See, this is, me, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna yeah. say, I'm so glad that you're bringing this up because there seem to be two two voices that you're hearing in the magic community right now. It's there's the one that's just like, everyone's just like post anything you want, post whatever. And then there's the other side that is, it is, it is criticized. It's like, well, don't stop trying. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? But, but nobody is really talking like this. I I mean, I've been having conversations one-on-one with friends, but like in a public format like this, I don't see anybody really going, we need this dialogue. There's, there's a good way to do it. This is great. Okay. Yeah, so we really need this dialogue, man. Um, I I think that that given the right amount of focus and just learning the medium of of Zoom or virtual cam magic, um, you can create something that is worthy of performing. But yeah. I think that without giving the attention to it, most likely what you'll be performing is not going to be good. Yeah. So it's like give the attention to what works and what doesn't actually work in this medium and then understand the medium itself and how that actually affects the interaction. I mean, magic is, is something that we do between two human beings or more, you know, an audience. And, um, there's a, there's a sort of byplay that happens that is not naturally there. And it's really weird when you first start doing magic on zoom afterwards, they're like, that was amazing. But, nobody's applauding nobody's like right. because they're so seduced by the medium of the screen it's like we're used to watching screens we're used to watching television we're used to watching videos on and as soon as they, they get into that mode they forget they're there yes they forget yeah. that we're in this interaction they forget that there's a back and forth and mm-hmm. um so a couple of quick tips uh one thing is you you have when you're in a zoom and you have 50 people in a zoom you have to mute everyone yeah, Otherwise, yeah. it's pandemonium. There's dogs barking. There's kids screaming. And so you, you mute everyone down. But I usually leave one person at a time open yeah. so they can dialogue. And then the other thing is, um, I think that after an effect concludes, if you can, if you have a free hand to unmute at that moment and let sort of that tension mm-hmm. release a little bit, that's a good thing. Um, it's one other thing I'm playing with and I don't have the answer to this yet. Okay. Um, it, it's something I, th- I'm sort of have an answer to, but I, I'm still figuring out is people don't realize they don't, well, first they don't know how to applaud on zoom. Right. Secondly, they don't know 
they don't know to applaud. It's like this weird right. thing. It, it's a strange thing. Well, you, yeah, you do magic. People, people are starting to use this in work scenarios, but how often is there an applause break in the middle of your like marketing? Never. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I have always found a little bit of um, re- repulsion as an audience member when a performer stands on say, stage and tells me how and when I'm to applaud. Right. I, I always find that really like it puts me off in a huge way. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. But when you're on a Zoom call and people don't even know how to applaud on Zoom. Right. <laughs> so what I have toyed with as an idea is like when I'm doing a corporate thing, if someone brings me in to that Zoom to do a, a, a performance, I'll be like, well, Janet, thank you so much. And, and maybe we can give her a little applause for setting this all up. And yeah, yeah, by the way, yeah. this is how you applaud on Zoom. You have to bring your hands like this yep. in front of the camera and you have to do this <laughs> for her, right? So now I'm so giving good. it to her. I'm not saying like, this is for me, but it's like training them a little bit. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. How to applaud because I, it's so weird, man, trying to do magic and having it just be dead silent, even though you know it hit. You know, the magic hit. You can see their Uh reactions to their faces too. Yes. But keep in Uh mind in a, you know, you, you at that moment, you've concluded the effect. You're looking at the audience, but they're all looking at you. So they're not seeing everybody else react necessarily. You know, that's right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's also the problem is there's that social proofing that happens in an audience when they hear Uh each other applaud. And by the way, that's why I have rounded rows in my show and not straight rows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've always thought that if people can kind of see each other a little bit Mm -hmm. by the roundness of the rows, that that adds to that um, sort of accumulation of applause and and of release of tension at those moments. But um, I I think on Zoom, it's just this thing that we have to figure out. And I just still don't really have a great answer for it other than unmute people at that moment, if you can. And maybe in a, in a subtle way that doesn't necessarily toot your own horn, uh, give them some indication on how to applaud. Right. That's so good. That's really good. I've, um, in the, I've done some corporate meetings, um, especially with like past clients, I've just offered to like reconnect, you know, and, and do some stuff to, to motivate and encourage a lot of people right now are having to work from home for the very first time. And as performers, we've all, you know, figured out a way to work from home, have a home office, do the office work. Create point. It. So I, I spend the first 10 minutes doing a really fun, uh, interactive kind of coaching on how to work from home. And so I oh, offer that as a, as kind of another thing. So it's not just entertainment, but oh, that's great. one of the things I've noticed is like, if you're, I mean, I suppose if you're doing a show for a lot of kids, you would have to have control over all those, all, all of the, uh, the muting and all of that. But in a corporate setting, it's nice to play like you're doing with the, uh, the clapping. You can set the contacts at the beginning and say, Hey, I'm going to call on different ones of you as we're coming. If you could just un- make sure to unmute yourself so everyone can hear your response. And, and people are getting really kind of quick on the zoom when it comes to the controls and all of that. And I, I've, yeah. I found that to be a really helpful thing. Yeah. They but, can also hold the space bar down. To unmute. Yeah. That's so good. I didn't know yeah. that till like two days ago. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's the way to do it. It's so good. Uh, Cause that whole, like, control right right i don't even even now i still don't know what it is to raise your hand Um, oh yeah 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 it's so bizarre well i want to so folks who who are listening who maybe this is their first time connecting with you uh i love that you're talking about this in a virtual setting because one of the things that you are so brilliant at is creating an environment for a show to take place so i love if you don't mind to talk a little bit about what you've done and kind of, I mean, your, your start years and years ago with, with magic and wine and creating this experience yeah. and environment that people come to. And then maybe we can circle back and talk a little bit more about like the virtual world and how we do this now. Yeah, sure. Um, I, um, that whole magic and wine thing. So it's been 13 years now. It's crazy. Um, it's amazing. Like, so that show it was January 13th, uh, 2017, 2018, 2018. Yeah. No, wait. No, that's wrong. 2007, 2008. 2008. Um, that's my wife's that. birthday. So oh, I'll wow. have you know that I will forever know the day that David Minkin started Magic and Wine was January 13th. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the significance? Oh, that's my, it's my wife's birthday. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. That's so, why I started it. Was oh, for your thank you. Yeah, she's very grateful. 
is yeah. in honor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but so I started it because I, um, actually my friend Jerry Katzman encouraged me to, uh, to write my goals down one year. Right. Okay. And, um, it was like new year's ish. And I sat down with a pen and paper and said, all right, if I could have anything in the world, how would it look? Yeah. Right. And it was, I think I wrote down something along the lines of, I want to perform my show yeah. every week for appreciative audiences in a beautiful setting yeah. and get paid well to do it. So, and so, I, was so like, I, I can tell right now that this came from the fact that you were performing for not always appreciative audiences and not the yes. best environments, right? I mean, yeah, I was doing a lot of corporate gigs. That, yeah. And, um, you know, those are fun and everything, but they're, every time it's a new, like you show up and it's stressful. You're, you're in a new situation. You got to figure out where to put your, it feels like being on a reality up. show. Like, like yeah, you, gotta win, you know, you've got to figure out some sort of, uh, you know, how, what's the setup going to be and all of that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just wanted like a home, you know, That's where great. I could do my show ever all the time and have it be my space. And at the time everyone wasn't doing that. You know how like everyone's doing a four, they're all four walling a show now. Um, at the time it was literally, Steve Cohen, you know, yeah, in and New York, like yeah. maybe I, I'm just trying to even think of anyone else that was doing it back then. Um, and I just decided I wanted to make this larger than the sum of its parts. So I wanted to create a, a magic experience that wasn't just a show, but it was a little more like inviting them into my living room yep. and, you know, hosting people. And so the, the idea of wine came into it for me. And then um, I was talking with a, an, an event planner who, um, her name is AJ Steinberg and she and I were on the phone and, and I think there was like a gig that fell through or something. And she's like, well, let me know how else I could help you. And I'm like, well, do you know any venues, you know? And, right, and yeah. uh, she, she, um, she said, you should come check out the Beau Rivage in Malibu. It's a really beautiful venue. And I'm like, yeah, I've actually done shows there. That's so yeah. weird. Um, so we went down there, we talked to the guy, uh, and his, his venue was crickets at the time. I think that's an important thing. Like it was an underutilized venue. Right. And, yeah. um, and then there was also just happened to be, cause I wanted this wine thing, you know, there happened to be a winery that rented space in his parking lot in a little like kiosk, you know, yeah. and, um, Rosenthal wines. And so we talked to them and everyone, it just fell together. It was this so weird cool, like synergy. So cool. And, so I had my wine donated for four years by Rosenthal Wine. And Just as like, a, like really an advertiser, advertiser, like they were like part, part of the part promotion? Of promotion. Um, they didn't do much on the promotion side, but they did supply the wine. And that was a huge thing. And it allowed me co to, you know, structure it in a way that worked. Um, I, eventually, um, I eventually got on TripAdvisor and... Um, I was in the front end of that curve, basically. Yeah. Um, very quickly, my show became the number two attraction in Los Angeles wow. out of all, all things in LA. And there were days when I was when I was number one above the Getty Center when they'd get a bad review. And I, and I was always above the Philharmonic. And <laughs> it was the weirdest thing, man. I was like, I sort of felt like I really shouldn't probably be here, but, you know, here I am. And it, like literally... 30 to 35 clicks a day to my website for tickets just from TripAdvisor. Wow. And then one day TripAdvisor decided shows are no longer considered attractions. They are now activities Isn't and they stand overnight gone. So much and of this business is like you build something and then all of a sudden like, yeah. Oh, you know, Google changed the algorithms and now yeah. your SEO toast. is all toast. Like, yeah. Yeah. Find a new, a new angle because <laughs> your old one's gone. Yeah. yeah. So, that's what happened to me. And overnight I went from all full shows to like, there's, I don't know how I'm going to make it now. Yeah. And eventually I started doing advertising, paid marketing and, and I made it work. I became a marketer instead of, you know, full-time marketer, part-time right. magician. Um, and it was not fun, um, but it worked for a while. And, and then decreasing, uh, it's had a sort of a downward slope of effectiveness because of the competition for things like Facebook ads and different, you know, different ad platforms. Right, so basically right. it's like, I'm constantly having to reinvent myself every couple of years and, oh, yeah. it, and it's hard. Um, 
so I guess a long story. I don't even remember what the original question was. No, I, I was just, I was, I love what you're talking about right now on the digital platform. I, I, it makes so much sense to me because it's the approach that you've had all along with when you bring an audience in with your show, you create a whole environment. So could you talk a little bit about like when you found this venue, but even mm. then, like you're bringing curtains in or you're bringing in wine yeah. bear, like you're designing and curating this space. Right. Yeah. Um, the, I think there's some photos on my Instagram of, um, the, the space that I still have magic and wine going on in Anaheim. So I have the built more as a separate type of experience now, yeah. but it's just a show only, but, um, the magic and wine stuff, um, I created, I took a ballroom in a hotel and, um, created a theater in that space essentially. And, um, cost me like $6,000 in curtains, you know, um, they were hand sewn by, um, Tina Lee oh. and, uh, yeah, all the magic castle curtains were done by her. She yeah. does, she hand sews everything and, Incredible. um, can't recommend her work highly enough. It's phenomenal, but it is not, um, you know, it's, it's yeah. definitely going to cost you money to do that. Right. But so if you go to my Instagram, you can look at the, the set where there's wine barrels, there's, um, curtains, there's up lights, there's all these things that make it look like, it's not a ballroom because right. I mean, and tiered, you strip that down. seating like the, the multi-level chairs. Yeah. 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 Which is wild because um, the castle now, if you go to the castle, they, they started is, doing it. Yeah. The castle. If you go down to, to the bar, which is now the library bar it used to be WC Fields bar. They've, yeah. they've set up this tiered seating. And when I first saw that, I went, Oh no, when I first saw it was in the, uh, they put it in the Peller and I went, right. somebody has been going to David Minkin's show. <laughs> it's funny. You know what? It was Max Maven, I think. Um, cause he came and saw it in, in, uh, in Malibu. Although I can't take credit for that. I'm sure if someone else thought of that. Yeah. Know, but I never, of- I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't at the castle before you did it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, it, it was, um, it's just, a, it was like a natural necessity. We had to get people to see over other people. I have I've always sat in every chair in my show and mm-hmm. and made sure that from every seat I can see clearly because yeah. I think we need to care enough about our audience to really know that they can all see um, from where they're sitting. And so what we do is I, I've kind of figured out that you can't go more than two rows in, in terms of close up magic. If you're not elevated on a stage, right? Okay? Yeah. I have a small riser, but um, for close up magic, and I'm not a tall guy. <laughs> um, I, basically, you can't go more than I can't go more than two rows without elevating. So, like, right. you can do two rows of low chairs, then you elevate to medium stools, then you elevate two rows of that, and then you elevate to high stools, and you can now have a total of um, six different rows. Mm. But we 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 have actually four rows at Magic and Wine. Okay. So um, there's the two low chairs, then there's medium stools and high stools. So literally everyone can see. In fact, the back row is probably in some ways the best. Mm. So, um, I want, I just give attention to all that kind of stuff because I really care about people's experience. Yeah. I want them to have the best experience they can have. And that's, that's why I'm a magician, man. I mean, I, I want people to have a cool experience. That's why I got into magic was to be the deliverer of cool experiences. And so, that's just the spirit by which I create when I do like a show scenario. Um, Cause I think, you know, I think it matters what your, what your inner intention is for doing what we do. You know, some people are, are trying to fill a void of some, some kind that like got left on a playground or, right, right. Um, <laughs> you know, or, or they're, they're getting back at this or that, you know, like, but like my intention has always been, I just want people to have, an awesome time, an awesome yeah. experience. And, um, that's the only thing I think about. That's so good. That's so good. Yeah. And it makes such a big difference. I mean, I, I hear a lot of performers talk about the environments in which they perform in as if they have no decision in the, in the matter, right? Like, Oh, I had to do this show and it was in this terrible room and this and that. But uh, I, I remember Chipper Lowell was the one who first told me, he was like, if you get to a, a, a corporate event, I do a lot of corporate events. He's like, if you get there and they didn't read the writer and it's not set up right, you make sure it's set up right. Like, just yeah. just do it. Like, I can't tell you the amount of times I've had people move chairs onto the ballroom floor without asking permission. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you just, you have to take control over the environment in which people are going to experience your art. Yeah. Because uh, if you don't, um, 
then they may not have a good experience. And if they don't have a good experience then it's still going to be your fault. Right. That, you know, like at the end of the day, if the show doesn't go well, it's always our fault. That's how I feel about it. I always blame me. Like, you know, even when someone else does something that they were supposed, that they were supposed to do and they didn't do it or whatever. I just, um, I always take responsibility and, and like, always feel like if something didn't go well, it was, it was my fault, you know? Mm. Um, it's so good. I love, I love that you're talking about this in the digital platform because now it's interesting. Like before I felt like before most people probably went through their whole life without ever seeing a magician live, a majority of people, you know, it's still yeah. pretty rare. People get excited when they see magic cause they don't see it all the time. But now all of a sudden it's like magic's everywhere, but it's not done good. so well always, yeah. <laughs> you know? So what, <laughs> What uh, what else would you say, or what other things are you noticing about kind of what's going on in the? I I think people are just throwing a bunch of spaghetti at the wall yeah. and hoping some of it sticks. And the thing is, is what I would recommend is take your take your material, take your set list that you're planning to do online or virtually. Yeah. And first of all, ask yourself if you want to give it away for free. Right. But um, but then just like go through it and and look at what actually works. Yeah. And what doesn't and then also maybe give some attention to how to connect with people too you know um but you know it's just like there's a couple of things that i see that are just like instant okay that's not good you know there's whatever um, one thing is production value like right. just turn on some lights you know yeah. <laughs> crying out loud like the light yourself um I don't know if, if you can, if I show you something, can you comment on what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so I'm going to swing this around and just show you that I, this light that I'm using right now, yep. um, it is it is a um, very diffuse light. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks great. Um, it's an umbrella that I converted into a light. Uh, it totally is. Yeah, I basically it's a, it's, took, it's, it's, I took an umbrella and I got a daylight balance bulb and put it in there uh and then like mounted it to a tripod yep. um and then i i coated the inside of the umbrella with with aluminum foil okay yep to reflect back forward um and then the top of it is all basically wax paper so it's all diffusion got it so it it's looks like great. this it looks giant fantastic. yeah thanks man it's like this giant soft box you know yeah but but i it love it because that's that's things that you could find readily during a during a pandemic, you Absolutely. know, things like, that would be I, considered I, non-essential. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to probably do a video. video. I think I'm going to actually teach people how to make one of these things. Yeah. Why not? It's, it's like, it makes a difference and um, lighting is important. And, and then like, look at your background and, uh-huh. and try to make it neat and, and interesting. But beyond all that stuff, like the more important thing is magic that works on the, the camera. And one of the things I was about to say was, um, there's a frame here, right? So you can see this square yep. frame that we're in. Yep. Um, if you're doing magic for a camera, you got to be really careful about those edges, right? Because if something touches an edge, it immediately raises the question: Oh, his hand went out of frame for a second. He could have done anything, yeah, or yeah, yeah. If it touched an edge. He could have dropped it as he touched. You know, keep your hands. If you're doing something and you want it to look fair right. in the middle of that frame and don't come near the edges because yeah. um, it's just things like that, that you got to learn the the medium. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, the opposite would be like, if you go way so far back so that it's a yeah. head, head to toe shot and then no one can see the coins for your three, yeah. five, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And, and audio, like um, right. if you're really far back, your audio is going to be awful. Um, what have you, have you figured out, you, do, do you use some sort of uh, wireless um, microphone or how are, how are I, you doing? I have, um, I have a Rode. Okay, so when I'm doing my, my virtual magic stuff, I actually figured out a way to get my DSLR Great. to, um, so I have, I'm not using it right now for this shot, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a really cool lens that'll blur out the background and stuff. Um, and the, there's a road mic on the top of it. So it's a directional mic. That's great. Uh, and then I have this other, just this little lapel mic if I need it and stuff, but, um, I'm close enough. Also, if I really just have to do it on a webcam, I can. Um, but like I said, I try to get a two camera shoot going. Yep. So yeah, the more yeah. production you can do, you know, more professional it looks. 
Yeah, it, it makes such a huge difference. And I've noticed, um, especially in the corporate meetings, it instantly stands out. I mean, you mentioned I have, yes. this isn't my actual setup, but I have some uplights in the space and it just, even that and good front lighting, it just instantly looks yeah. different than. I'm impressed, man. You look great. <laughs> this is, this is a professional looking setup. Oh, you could totally do, you know, you could do a show with that, with that background and it just, is this where you you do it somewhere else? I do I do it here. I have a different table. I have a like a card table that I use, so it's a little lower, so you don't see the. I'm in a shed right now. This is my. I, um, I built a a tough shed in my backyard as a home office. Oh, that's we cool. finished it like a room, so it's like a little hundred square foot room that I I do all my stuff in. So that's awesome. I'm so glad I built it before the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, this last couple of years has been where I've been doing stuff, but um, awesome, yeah. Man. It's, before this, I just, I had a closet and I just lit it nice. And, you know, I, I used to have people, I would post videos and they'd be like, oh, you're so lucky you have a studio. I'm like, I'm literally in a four foot broom closet. <laughs> you know, wow. you just, you, it looks you, great. You though. I mean, so. it, it looks professional. So, I mean, that, that's great. Like, and you've given some, some colored light there and it, it just, it has, you know, theatrical value. Oh, thank you, man. I, yeah. I, when you, when you do these shows, do you manage the, and I don't want to get too into like the, yeah, you know, yeah. all the details of it, but are you managing like the, the conference and everything, or are you joining someone else's conference? Usually how, how do you, what do you I've think done it both about? ways. Um, it's nice if you have someone who is hosting the conference and who you can maybe have them, unmute for you and right. do that kind of thing and introduce you. That's a really nice um, way to go. Um, but the ones that I've been, when I was donating my time to do them for people, I was just doing my own zooms on right. those and yeah. just rolling in. And there was a group of people And the first one was really cool. Cause I was, um, there's like a couple people uh, in like Monrovia and then uh-huh. a dude who was up at like 2 AM in England. What? And it was just all these people like rolled in and, and I did magic and they were, it, it was really cool. Uh, I realized at that moment that it could work, even though I realized, first of all, that I wasn't doing it well yet, yeah. but that, that I could and that I needed to give some attention to figuring it out. Yeah. And by doing that um, over and over for a couple of weeks, basically, I, I figured out a lot of little nuances to it. That's so good. But it just takes practice. You just got to keep doing them and, um, and realizing that some things will work and some things won't and just cut cut the things that don't work. Yeah. And especially before you go on Instagram and do your whole show, yeah. cut the things that don't work. You know, yeah. it's, it's an interesting time. And I, uh, weird. it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird, man. But, but I love that you instantly like, again, this is another thing that I wanted to, I, okay. First of all, let me, let me backtrack. I've yeah. known, I've known of David Minkin for years. I've been like a, a fan from a distance. I've known you, we've ran into each other at the castle We've said, Hey, but I've never gotten to really connect with you. Uh, yeah. This is like the first conversation. Which it's around. super wild. We need to make sure that doesn't happen anymore. But, exactly. I, uh, but one of the things that I've always admired about uh, seeing your work in your shows, like at the castle, and then also just in, in your advertisement and in, in, in the work that you're doing outside and in, in magic for magic and wine and all of that. I love your attention to detail. And I, and I love like you just, you have an entrepreneurial spirit where you're like, I mean, I guarantee most of us weren't like the day after going like, well, all right, time to flip my whole career and paint some walls and set up a studio. (laughs) I mean, most people are still in a holding pattern right now. And I, and I think that you, they could get some encouragement just from seeing how you, you had this attitude of like, man, it's about a hustle, right? Like you got to keep going and those that don't keep swimming die. So like, well, where did that come from? Has that always been? Oh, it came from my dad, man. Like my dad is an insurance salesman, you know, life insurance salesman. Yeah. Um, He never had a salary. He always had, he just hustled. Commission. Yeah. All I ever knew growing up was watching my dad hustle and my dad hustled hard. Like he hustled to the point where, I mean, it, he was gone in the in the morning and came home, you know, late in the evening and yeah. was just working, working, working. Um, so I guess I saw a certain work ethic from him mm-hmm. that I don't have even to this day, <laughs> but, um, but I, I aspire to sometimes. And uh, um, I don't know, I guess it, it's just a matter of like, it's like Tetris, man. I, I'm also really into strategy and like, okay. I, like 
I play Hearthstone and stuff like, yep, yep. like I'm addicted to strategy games, you know? And, and so it's like, I see things like, like Tetris blocks sometimes it's like that day after, okay, well I need to perform. Um, where, how am I going to do that? And how am I going to make money at it? So yeah. just, ask, you know, asking the right questions is yeah. usually the, the thing that I found most important. And it's also the same in magic. It's like when I'm creating magic, it's, it's created and birthed in a, in a shower of questions. It's like asking intelligent questions about why do I do this thing? Why do I do this move? Why do I hold my hand with this kind of tension? Why do I do that? And, and all the questions that you ask slowly form something into a more polished thing. Right. right but it's right. the same with, um, with, with, all this stuff that we're dealing with right now, there is a solution. There is a way to do virtual magic well. Yep. Um, and there is also a way to make a living at it and to not devalue it. And yeah. I think I'm really scared right now for our, for our community because I think we are dangerously close to devaluing what we do. Yeah. And um, we can make money at this if we, if we take the time to learn the virtual medium correctly and yep. to, to make sure that what we're doing is of value and quality, yep. then yep. we can charge for it and just do it like we've always done. And like, you know, here's a show for you guys. Here's the price. Um, and, good. and then you got to market it, but yeah. Well, let's talk about that a little bit because I have seen, I've seen, I have seen the guys that are out there just putting out anything online, you know, putting out their whole act which is interesting. Like I've been putting out tons of stuff online, but none of it is in my show. It's all just stuff I'm making yeah. just to be disposable, you know, just right. for fun. Yes. Fun. Me and, too. And marketing and all that. But, um, but I, but I've, then I've seen other guys who are hustlers and they're working, but they're like, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm probably only going to get like a hundred bucks for this or that. Like people aren't going to pay the mm-hmm. same for virtual. And I haven't seen that. Like I'm, I'm not, I don't want to believe that. I mean, I've, no. I don't believe that. So, so yeah, give us, give us, give us the rundown on that, man. Like, how do you, how do you approach that? Like you don't, I, cause most guys I think instantly go like, well, no, you know, if they pay, if they pay X amount of dollars for me to get on an airplane and fly to Cleveland, they're not right. going to pay that for me to jump into their zoom call. I am struggling with this question myself yeah. to be totally honest. And, um, I don't have the the answer for this. All I know is that Again, let's ask the right questions. And the, the right questions would be, are there people... Okay, everyone feels like no one's going to pay this because we're all in a pandemic. Okay, but let's step back from that belief for a moment and go, are there people out there that still have money? Yes. Yeah. Are there a lot of them? Yes. There are more than you could ever count. Yeah. Um, are there people out there who have money who have a need for entertainment? Yeah. Yes. Okay, we've established a baseline belief here that... Right. There's money and there's value. And all we have to do is provide the value and the money will be there. And so for the guys that are like freaking out and, and lowering their rate to like, you know, here, I'll, here's 20, give me 20 bucks and I'll do a trick, you know, right. yep. show for you guys. No, it's like, just, first of all, take a day or two. Yeah. I'm not saying you, but just everyone who might be yeah, listening, yeah, yeah. Who's a magician, take a couple of days, really go through your material and hone it for this medium. And figure out what works and what doesn't. Yeah. And also um, work with the medium, like maybe Skype your family or Zoom your family and practice the controls and practice yeah. everything so you can be a smooth professional deliverer of what we do. Yeah. And then charge money for it because yeah. there's yeah. still companies that are spending money out there. And, and you know, there's a need for, um, for companies to have some sort of mood lifter, right? Yes. Because morale is down. So there's actually a bigger need in, in a very specific type of niche mm-hmm. um, for us right now. Yeah. Their morale is at an all-time low, and we are people that can change that if we hone our skills. Yep. So that would be my advice. Yeah, that's good. And I think, too, um, I, I've talked to some people who have the, I, the attitude or the idea that this is a temporary thing. So they're like, well, I'm just doing this temporarily. Um, but I can also tell you, I've talked to business owners and to, I mean, like my brother works for a very huge company that has a tower in downtown LA and mm-hmm. their company is seriously considering not going back to that tower because 
their new system of how they're operating is working so effectively. Interesting. And they're like, oh, we have people now that they're much happier because they're not spending three hours in traffic to get there and back every day to commute. Whoa. And um, we're saving all That's... this money by not having a building. But so <laughs> th- on, on one hand, that can be terrifying to some of us because we go like, okay, what does that mean? Are they not doing large gatherings anymore or all that? All, all I'm saying is I do think some element of this type of platform is going to exist in the future. I do too. And I think the more we pr- prepare and practice and research and hone it, there's going to be people that come out of this and are in the same exact spot, right? Like yeah. six months. I don't know how long ago, six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we don't know, but there, we know there are guys and gals in this industry who are going to be in the same position they came into it in. And then there are going to be ones that are, ahead of the game. Right. Yeah. So we just got to make the decision that we're going to put in the time and, and the work and, and not make excuses. Like what, what excuse yeah. do we have? We don't have money. Okay. We'll make, take an umbrella and make a great light out of it. Your lighting looks great. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but what, like you can't say you don't have time. We all got time right yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Like I have no excuse right now because I, um, I've been writing a book slowly over like the last yes. 15 years um, and now it's kind of morphed into two books. So and good. I, I love it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not an author. I'm I not love a it. by nature, but like, I really want to get this done and I have no excuse why yeah. I haven't been working on it. I, I mean, I really need to play less video games and <laughs> <laughs> it's a balance uh, though, man. Sometimes we all, we all have our, game, right? <laughs> we all have our things that are our, our distractions, you yeah. know, but I guess we just have to like believe for a moment that in this current meta right now, yeah. we have the ability to make money and to provide value. Yes. And if we just believe that and work on it and yep. put it out there, yes, I think that we need to see less uh, just free magic shows on, on online and more people um, charging for what they do right. and doing it well. Yeah. But uh, you know, when you see an entire 60 minute magic show of someone's like lifelong material yeah. thrown out onto the internet for free, it's, it makes me really sad. Yeah. Uh, it, it just makes me go like, why? Okay. I've seen their show. Why would I buy a ticket to their show now? Right. You know? Well, and if that's okay, so I'll take this, I'll take us down this road a little bit. I have argued for years. I, I started to say this at the beginning, but like my big gripe about magicians is I feel like all of us, to an extent, you you have surpassed us. You you're not in this situation, but most of us uh, borrow audiences for a living, right? So you you've curated an experience. You did this with Magic and Wine. You're doing this with at, at the Biltmore. But like, um, you've created a thing that's that's in essence, people. It, it has its own audience, right? Like you're you're finding yeah. an audience, and then once they come, they become fans of that show. They're going to bring friends back. But yeah. most magicians. Um, just go, well, I'm going to sit by the phone and I'm going to wait for, you know, Coca-Cola to call me and ask me to do their conference. And if I really crush it, maybe three years from now, they're going to hire me again, you know? Yeah. But every comedian that I know (laughs) is hustling for no other reason than to get better and to build an audience because they know if they can get enough people that love what they do, they can put out an album every couple of years and people are going to buy it and they can tour and people are going to go to shows and they can put out a t-shirt and people are going to get that too. You know? And yeah. so I, um, I don't know. I just, I, I think it's interesting. I, I say all that because like, if you're going to, if you, if you want to put your material out, really be strategic about it and think about it, you know? And yeah. in January I taped, I taped a special that we're currently, we're in post-production. It's almost done, but I haven't <laughs> sold it yet. Like I don't know where it's going to live but I put a ton of money and time and energy into this thing because I said, if I'm going to put this material out, I want it to look as good as it can, you know? And I want it to be something that five years from now, I'm not bummed that I burned all that stuff, you know? Yeah. So that's awesome. But I, yeah, I just, I think you produced, you produced it yourself. Uh, yeah, I hired a production company, a friend of mine back wow. East. Um, so yeah, we filmed, we filmed at a dynasty typewriter out in LA, the old Hayworth theater. And we did two shows and it was, it was great, man. I, I'm super, super stoked about it. So if anyone knows the number for Netflix, no, (laughs) maybe they need some content right now. (laughs) 
Uh, I think I actually, I think there's going to be a lot of need for content. Yeah. Um, this might be a great time to actually sell it. I think, I think so, man, I'm believing it, but, but again, that's, but that's a reason why I'm not just like going to go do my whole show tomorrow online. Like, (laughs) right. You know, and like, I I thought it was great what you said earlier about, um, uh, just about putting stuff out online. That's not your bread and butter. That's not your main show, you know, like, yeah, if, if you like, you know, the other day, my, my neighbor was blowing bubbles. Actually, she was doing it again just now. I had to like <laughs> tax her to stop because the kids were out there screaming and stuff. But, <laughs> um, but like these bubbles were going by. And so I grabbed my phone and I, I grabbed, you know, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, let's say I converted one of the bubbles into a solid. Yeah. Like not all your listeners are magicians. Right. Um, right. And, uh, you know, and, and it was like an effect and I put it on TikTok or whatever. So cool. like that to me, that's not something I do in my show. Like, so, so it's fine. You know, it's like a little magical moment of something. Um, but when you've honed a show, yeah for like 15 20 years <laughs> yeah 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 and you tick especially if you ticket that show oh man to put it out there i'm just like I, it just doesn't make sense to me like that i don't know but i i'm not judging anyone who does it okay i, I want to make it clear right now because i do understand the the just the general compulsion to perform right now as a performer and i'm i don't i'm not judging or saying anything negative about people that are doing it i just i just it just makes me sad that i think they're they're going to be having trouble later on trying to sell tickets if that's what they plan to do mm-hmm. if they don't ever want aspire to do tickets then put it out there like whatever man like there's something to be said for building brand too right you know like it's what you were talking about with comedians um and maybe we as magicians maybe i'm wrong maybe what we should be doing is, is, I don't know. I, I'm the, it's, I, all I can say is what works for me and what makes sense to me and my own perspective on things. And I'm not necessarily right about it, but I do have an opinion. No, I, th- <laughs> I think it's good. I think, I, I think there's, there is a healthy balance, you know, like you've, um, I do think there, there is a healthy balance, but I, I, I think you're absolutely right. Like you don't want to put the thing that was designed for a very specific personal intimate experience <laughs> To just throw it out in in yeah. not the best way, you know. It's like we yeah, wouldn't yeah. we wouldn't want you 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 wouldn't want to uh, like nobody uses the footage from their for their promo video from the worst gig you ever did. Why would you <laughs> Why would you film the worst gig you're ever going to do in your living room? Well, you know what's funny is like mine. One of my worst gigs I ever did was was actually in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw That's Magicians, so right? But yeah. Um, one of the hardest gigs, yeah, was a bachelorette party on a sh- on a boat in Marina del Rey, and um, we were filming for Magician's Life and the Impossible. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Of course, that's the show that makes it in, you know, <laughs> oh, like, not the yeah. ones that got standing ovations, but right. the one where I I'm just getting eaten alive by these bachelorettes, and they're asking me to like perform nude and stuff. And, oh my gosh, um, I remember that. <laughs> that's a rough one, man. Bachelorette parties are always just the worst. They're, they're, yeah, and, you, and your initial instinct as a man is to go, yeah, heck yeah, let's do a bachelorette party, right? Yeah, it's not no, a good idea. No, it's not anything you will ever want to well, do. I learned this. Um, have, you, have you been to House of Cards in Nashville yet? Have you made it out there? No, I haven't been out there. Joey's a good friend of mine, but I, I haven't gone to yeah, I, I, The last time I was out there, I noticed this even more, but they, they've now surpassed Vegas for like the number one bachelorette location in the, in the country. So Nashville is Nashville. So they have like <laughs> flatbed trucks that they've turned into like party barges. And so they're just, just trucks loaded of like oh, bachelorette God, like everywhere. Cool. But then every night, like you do the show and, and usually like one of the three or four shows you do a night would just be all bachelorette and you just be like, Oh no, oh, no here we go. Did you do it? Did you go out there? Yeah. Yeah. I've done it. I've done it twice. I did it right when they open and then I did it last August. Yeah, but it's great. I mean, the venue is beautiful. It's yeah. they've really done a great job there. It's it's That's really awesome. really nice. But yeah, but bachelorettes, uh, watch out for it. <laughs> Stay away from them, man. Your <laughs> hair? Like, did you did you get a haircut or something? Like, how is your hair looking that good, dude? <laughs> so my it's wife, been, my wife, uh, cut we've my been hair quarantined with, for six weeks. <laughs> my wife cut my hair with the dog clippers. So, oh my god. <laughs> Mine, I'm literally rocking my the same hairstyle that I have not rocked since my bar mitzvah. 
<laughs> this is my bar mitzvah hair right now. This is what this is. That's yeah. amazing. You know, you look great, man. You Thanks, look great. Man. Do you have a plan? What, what's going to happen? Are you going to? Uh, I'm going to. You got to attempt point, to. to cut cut my hair. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you, you're you're dating Jessica. Yeah. You guys are quarantined yeah. now. Yeah. She was on the show a few weeks ago, and we had it was one of the funnest conversations I've She's ever had. Good. Yeah, she's she's a who and her stories, her magic stories. Oh my goodness, because she I've, grew up. I don't know I anyone. She grew up. Yeah, I mean, her whole life she's been in magic, and I got into magic late. I don't know if you know that, but I I got into magic when I was um, twenty eight in grad school. Wow. And so I, you know, I, I took a kind of a later route, and 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 in some ways I think that was good for me because I yeah. had to like I had to learn how to social before I knew how to do a card trick. That's um, good. But. Uh, but so she grew up in magic her whole life and she has stories that just never end. I mean, we've been, like it's been two years and I'm still hearing stories. <laughs> even last night, I just can't even get my head around her stories. They are incredible. <laughs> yeah, and right, she's right. also, I did not expect to at this point in my career. And maybe I was being a bit like, I don't know, maybe this is like stupid of me or whatever, but like, I, I didn't think that I was going to learn like so much from any one magician at this point in my career. Right. Yeah. And then like dating her, let alone someone I was dating, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, she has the exact opposite knowledge from me. Like we have diff- two different, completely different perspectives in the art. And we've come from two totally different places. Me from being like a close up guy that slowly started to become more of a, you know, into right, larger yeah. magic and stage stuff. And her from, living on the stage her entire life and now becoming more of a close-up magician. And right. um, just the, the, the compliment of that, of those two perspectives and that knowledge coming together has been really staggering. That's so cool, man. Yeah. That's so cool. She's creative too. I mean, I, she, that girl, if you ever have like a project where you need someone, you know, to just sort of like think about, yeah. Uh, what or just or who knows all the history of magic her knowledge of the that. history of magic is staggering to me you know yeah i i just uh, it's humbling you know that's so, so cool yeah, yeah it's it's so wonderful to have people in your life and and realizing that like i mean how wonderful for you to have found someone that you're dating you know and connecting with on that level who, who yeah. not only understands the art, but like loves it and has a passion for it. That's so rare. Yeah. Um, that's so cool, man. He's also a night owl who can talk about magic all night long. Yeah. <laughs> every, every night is like a convention. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's a little, you know, You're sometimes like, you just don't want to talk about magic. Can we just watch a show on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. No, actually the, for the most part, we, we don't do it as often as we probably should as yeah. far as time, like magic sessioning. We, we used to, when we, you know, first met and stuff, but now it's like, it's more rare, but we should do more of it. Cause yeah. when we do, we go, why don't we do this more often? You know, cause we come up with all kinds of stuff. And so good, stuff. man. Well, that's, yeah. and that's another reason why I love these conversations and I love what you've shared today, because I think we forget that even though we're all, it goes back to us talking about, we're all separated, but we're all in this together kind of thing. Yeah. We can be a resource to one another. Like if you see somebody, I can't tell you how many times I've messaged someone have been like, what software are you using to connect that camera to that piece of gear? Like, because yeah. they know, like people are learning mm-hmm. things and we're all figuring it out. And I think that, um, I think that that's one great thing about the community of magic is we have, while there is always been competition and this and that, and th- there is this element of like, we're all magicians. Like, well, let's all help each other make this thing as a whole better. So, yeah. I can't True, thank you enough for sharing today, man. And, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. dude. And by the way, man, I, I saw your show in the parlor and I thought you did an amazing job oh. and you, on three different levels. One, magically, um, as a performer, you did a great job and then you were likable. And oh. those three things are a rare combination. Thank you, man. That means that means so much to me. You you, yeah. you messaged me that and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's it's always nice to get a compliment. It's another thing when somebody like that you really respect you know, as a performer, as a, as a businessman, like it just, it means the world, man. So I, I can't, I can't thank you enough. I, I'm going to cut this off because I want to talk to you a little bit more about some stuff, but I'm going to keep that off the podcast. 
Okay, That's okay. Sure. <laughs> but tell, tell people where they can see what you're doing, how they can follow along. Uh, what, what can we let people know? David Minkin, M-I-N-K-I-N, uh, pretty much on all social media. And yeah, um, I'm going to probably do a video on this umbrella construction. Yes, situation. do it. Um, so I'll probably throw that either on, it's either going to be IGTV or YouTube. I don't do much on YouTube, but I think I might do that. Um, or what was the other place I was thinking? Um, yeah, probably just one of those so you're, two. So you're doing stuff on TikTok too? Have you jumped on the TikTok? Um, I've, I've dabbled on TikTok. Like, I don't really understand TikTok. I don't either. The first thing I posted on there got like 47,000 views, you know? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And, yeah. And and then everything else that I thought was way better right. gets like 250 it's, views. And I'm it's, like, what's going on? It's all algorithms, man. It's all so it's weird. weird. I think they're just throwing darts at the wall and just like, <laughs> I think they well, are. That guy gets it today. Right. You know? Today, today you're the chosen one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this, man. Hang tight. We're pleasure, talk. Man. And I look forward to more chats. Yes. Yes, indeed. Friends, go check out David's site. Go follow him online. And uh, we'll be back with more about to break. Thanks for being here with us. If you enjoyed this conversation, why don't you check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash about to break to become a producer today.